goes, of course we're having a great time. Now, I, I haven't had a chance to do this yet. Everybody's been taking pictures of me, but I thought it's going to be fun if I got a shot of you guys. Uh, so let me just uh, hit a few buttons here. Oh, this is embarrassing. It's taking too long now. The director's going, come on, James. Okay, so if all of you could just move over here. All right, big smile. I'm going to put this on my Facebook. Oh, you look beautiful. Okay, good. Very nice. Okay, be looking for yourself later. Be like, where's Waldo? All right. So, I am so thrilled to be the host of Star Wars Weekends, and I have had such a great time. Do you know that we only have today and tomorrow left? No. What will we do? We'll wait till next year. Yes, of course. How many Star Wars fans do we have? How many of you have been on uh, Star Tours? How many of you have been on Star Tours more than five times? More than ten times? 15? 20? Oh, we still have some. How, way in the back there. How, how many times? How many? Can't count. Oh, well, you're having a good time. All right, well, very good. Well, Star Tours is amazing. Star Wars is amazing. But I think the Clone Wars is the best. What do we think? Yes? Now, for those of you that don't know, uh, I am the voice of Obi-Wan Kenobi on Star Wars The Clone Wars. Uh, this dashing fellow right here. He sounds a bit like Ewan McGregor, yes? Well, you know, I have been Ewan McGregor's voice double for many years, and uh, in my show, Obi-Wan and Beyond, tonight, I will kind of explain a little bit about how all that came about and how I got to be the voice of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Because the fun fact here is, though Ewan is the one that we all kind of know and love, I've actually voiced more Obi-Wan Kenobi than any other actor, and I've been him longer than anybody else. Isn't that cool? That's the cool thing about being a voice actor, and if you come to the show, you'll find more things out about that. But also, if you're here at this show right now, you're going to find out what it's like to go into the studio and be a voice actor with some of the most amazing, talented people ever. One of which is your host of Behind the Force, and I'd like to bring her out now. She is the voice of Ahsoka Tano, and she's one of the best people in the world. I love her to death. And will you please welcome Ms. Ashley Eckstein! <laughs> And not only a, a fantastic voice artist, but she has designed clothes. Can you tell us a little bit about her universe, your clothing line? Yes, her universe. Oh, actually, we're twins. I see we're wearing oh, the same it. shirt. Um, you, you know, close to half of all Star Wars fans are women and girls. I see all the ladies out there. And, you know, a couple years ago when we started doing the Clone Wars, I, I wanted more stuff made for the women. That was Star Wars, and so Lucasfilm and, and Disney, they've been so wonderful. And, and you have a tent out there. Yes. Java, it was a Java's Hut or something? Yeah, Java's Hut, and it's very been large, there? Tent just like over there, Big white tent, and there's all these cool Star Wars things in it. you got to go in there, and you're signing things there, and there's also where you can get her universe shirts and Yes, stuff. you can get it's this very shirt. cool. <laughs> very, very cool. I'm so excited, and I'm so excited about your guests. So I'm going to let you get right to your show, but I'm going to go out there. If anybody minds, someone save me a seat. Yes, oh, okay, okay. Bye. James. Okay, good. Oh, okay, so oh, I'm going to go right up there. there. You do your thing, and I'm going to watch the show, because I never get to really see these. All right. One more round of applause for your Star Wars Weekend Show.
voiceover world. And actually, once you hear all the voices that he does, you're probably going to hear him every day because his voice is everywhere. You've actually already heard him in this show today. He was the announcer for our show. So you know him from the Clone Wars as the voice of the narrator, the voice of Admiral Yuaren, and most importantly, the voice of Yoda. <laughs> sitting down and people want to get a picture taken, you know, so I, I stand up and they're all like, oh, wow, you are so tall. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, wait a minute, the fact that I'm a human, it, that, that's, that's not a surprise, but that I'm a tall human, now that's a shocker. <laughs> I feel like I should like do it on my knees from now on, you know? <laughs> not so people don't get so frightened. <laughs> now Tom, I told our audience that um, they probably hear you everywhere, all over their television screens, in the movie theaters. So, you know, tell us where we actually, and, and who's wrote Star Tours? Who's wrote Star Tours yet? <laughs> all right, a lot of people wrote Star Tours. Who has gotten Admiral Akbar as your hologram? Okay, a lot of people. Tom is the voice of Admiral Akbar in Star Tours. Isn't that so cool? The moon of Endor is a crap. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, I do. Uh, most again, mo this is true of most of the people that do voiceover work. Um, even those of us that do cartoons, there's just not a lot of cartoons made. If you think of the whole universe of, of entertainment out there, so most of us, you know, the stuff we live on is voiceovers for commercials and, and network promos and, uh, and movie trailers. So that's most of what I do. Most of the time, you hear me. Um, I'll well on like uh, the voice of uh, the new Walmart campaigns. You know, the way you see the conveyor belt is like. A fishing rod, a tent, an airport. You know. <laughs> I was so excited when I heard the Walmart commercial the other day. Save money, look better. Walmart. So, <laughs> and of course, I'm going on my fifth year as uh, the voice of all the Scrubbing Bubbles commercials. You know, so, and which is, and I, again, those of you who are Clone Wars fans will suddenly realize that when I do it that the voice of Scrubbing Bubbles is the opening narrator for Clone Wars. So it's like, it's like here on the Scrubbing Bubbles lab, we're trying to figure out how to keep Darth Vader's toilet bowl clean. <laughs> That's what actually finally brought down the Empire, was dirty toilet bowls. <laughs> I mean, have you ever tried to clean one of those up after a Wookiee's been in there? I mean, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, anyway. But yeah, that and uh, uh, movie trailers, I, I do almost all the Disney and Pixar movie trailers, so most of the time when you hear those in the theater and on television, those are me too, so it's, um, uh, let's see, what, I, what, am I, what did I work on yesterday? Uh, they've got, fortunately, they have a studio here in the park, so when I'm done doing this, I actually go and do more trailers. And at first they, I, you know, I felt like I was bad, ask, I felt bad asking them, you know, can I use your, and then I went, wait a minute, they're Disney movies. <laughs> so yeah, I'm like, but yeah, it was uh, uh, like, Cars. like Cars 2, you know, like, it's Cars 2, starts June 24th at theaters everywhere, in IMAX 3D and 3D and Blu-ray and whatever, you know, from Disney Pixar. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, cool. Stuff like that. I, I told you, you're going to start hearing Tom Kane everywhere. Now, also, I was really excited because you were the voice of the Oscars this yeah. year. Yeah, third time I've done the uh, Oscars. And that's one of the things I actually have to be backstage for because it's a live broadcast. So if you screw up, they actually, you know, the whole world hears it. And, and this year I kind of flubbed Jennifer Aniston's name, but it sounded like a technical glitch, so I just went, I don't know. But yeah, that's the, um, um, live from the corner of Hollywood and Highland in Los Angeles, California. The Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences invites you to the 83rd Annual Academy Awards. Uh, now, now, one thing I think is neat is you do, uh, also, also James Arnold Taylor, what you, you talk about in your show is you do a lot of voice doubling for yeah. famous actors. Yeah, I mean, a lot, you know, a lot of like, uh, you know, normally when we're doing a, like a cartoon series, uh, you know, your job is to come up with a new and, and, and interesting take on a, on a voice. But in the case of, you know, James doing Obi-Wan or me doing Yoda, it's a completely different situation.
situation you've got to try to match something that's existing pretty closely well some of us are good at also matching celebrities so sometimes a celebrity is off shooting another movie and they need to fix some sound on something they've already done they'll bring in someone like James or I um, to, to match them and if we can match them close enough they, you can't tell so um, all of us have different specialties mine I get a lot of old British guys I've done ADR work for, for Patrick Stewart we're good if the mutants are to survive, my meter must be stopped. Um, I, did, uh, um, I did some Ian McKellen's Gandalf, you know, it, it, you know, you, you will not pass! <laughs> um, uh, the other day I had some uh, Liam Neeson for the first time. It was like, um, I don't know who you are, but if it's money you want, I don't have any. Wow. Uh, what I do have is a set of skills that make me a nightmare for people. But, uh, oh, and, uh, and I've got the one that everyone likes the best is Morgan Freeman. I actually, I dummy all, like all the visa spots you hear, those, I actually record all those first. And uh, they use them for testing and stuff, and then Morgan will come in and, you know, re actually record the real thing and make it 10,000 times more than I do. <laughs> yeah, he's like, um, the temperature is now 75 below zero, and the number of the penguin chicks who must survive the night. And we discovered the guess and be. Penguin tastes like chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff like that. Uh, uh, let's see, cartoons. Uh, besides Clone Wars, I was, uh, well, you know, a Jedi Master, of course. Yes. Near and dear to my heart, he is. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Powerpuff Girls. Some of you ever saw that? Powerpuff Girls. My favorite. I was Professor Utonium, as you might guess by looking at me. Um, <laughs> You know, that Mojo Jojo was the worst lab assistant I ever had. And, uh, <laughs> Mr. F Mr. Hedman from Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, Miss Fonsi's rules are meant to be followed. Uh, <laughs> and of course, there was Lord Monkey Fist from Kim Possible. I'm going to teach Kim Possible the power of peck while teaching monkey kung fu. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, Tom, you know, I get to ask you questions in the studio all the time. Yeah. But I thought I'd give our audience a chance to ask you a couple questions. Absolutely. So if you have a question for Tom, uh, James, you got a microphone there? I do. If anybody has a question for Tom, raise your Anyone hand. Here? And James will come to you with the microphone. Do we have, you have a question? All right, here, I'll reach over. Let me climb over. Uh, uh, yeah. Here's the falls. Yes. How were you discovered? Ooh, how um, were you discovered? That's shit. I, I wasn't. I discovered me. Uh, <laughs> I was a really obnoxious teenager. And uh, I was bored, and it was summertime, and I was living in a uh, suburb of Kansas City, and I didn't even know where Hollywood was. Because um, back then we didn't have things like, you know, the internet to find out such things. Google didn't exist. So I just thought it'd be fun to hear myself on television. It didn't, I didn't know people got paid for it. So I, I, I started, you know, you know how bad local commercials sound, because most of them are done, don't take this wrong, I'm sorry, I'm offending you, but 90% of the local radio spots are done by FM disc jockeys, so they all sound exactly the same. You know, will somebody be there, you know? And, uh, and so I, I had all these character voices and dialects that I did, and I thought, well, those would sound better. So I just started calling the local advertisers at 15, basically saying, yeah, your commercials really blow, and I can do a lot better, you know? And, and you know, of course, most of them were like, Pfft. Click. Well, one day I got a call back from somebody who was like, yeah, we'd, we'd love to have a professional voiceover guy. Well, professional went right over my head. The term voiceover I'd never heard. But, and then I had to have my daddy drive me down to the session. <laughs> so, of course, they walk in, walk up to my dad, and like, well, here's a script. And he's like, no, no, no. He points to this pimply-faced teenager with fringy cut-off jeans and my sweaty shirt. And they're like, what? <laughs> but anyway, they, I, they tried it because they'd already paid for the studio, so what the heck? And uh, three days later, I got hired to do five... Screen Actors Guild Union voiceover jobs, and that, it's gone kaboom since then. So. That's awesome. Well, and I think the, the message behind that is that you believed in yourself. Yeah, yeah, you can't. And, you, and, and it, thank you for putting this in the context that actually answers this question. <laughs> but no, it's true. And it, it, I'm not suggesting it's a good idea to call up and insult people's work. But the point <laughs> is that she made, and I should have, is that you don't wait to be discovered, because you'll wait forever. That, that whole thing of someone walking into the drugstore and discovering Marilyn Monroe, complete myth, never happened. No, they, they knocked on a lot of doors and, you know. Yeah, anyway. you, if you believe in yourself, then somebody else yeah. will believe in you, and that's obviously what you did, so. Or if you can just fake believing in yourself really yeah. well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, we're way over here, yes. 
What's it like to be the voice of Master Yoda? Ooh. Well, uh, I was a fan long before I was, you know, the person entrusted to carry on that voice. And it's, it is, it's weird. I mean, there are times, you know, when I'm actually doing the job, when I'm sitting behind the mic, all my concern is that moment to just do the best I can to give the director, Dave Filoni, what he wants. Um, and, you know, to try to do it as much justice as I can to the original. But as soon as I'm done, I kind of have this moment of, did I really just do that? <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a weird sort of, for all of us it is, because, you know, you grew up with something, and, and, you know, James and I have talked about this, because, you know, to grow up hearing Fred Flintstone, and now he's Fred Flintstone, is still hard to wrap our minds around sometimes. I mean, Jim, Mommy, yeah, Wilma, yeah, but never do. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> So, yeah, it, it is weird for us. You know, we're, it's, I know it seems hard to believe, but we're people just like you. So, <laughs> ask yourself how weird would it be for you to be Yoda one day? You'd be like, cool, wow, weird. <laughs> okay, one last question. Hey, Tom. Hey. You said you can do Gandalf, and I know James says Gandalf for Master Plo Koon. Have you guys ever voiced doubled each other when I was out sick? No, we, we do joke around. We always try to copy each other's voice, and it's done in a, in a friendly way. We, a couple people, and I won't help remain nameless, this is Scooby-Doo, that would just sound Scooby-Doo. No, they, no, there have been people that have come in from outside of our community because they were sometimes just ph phenomenally good parrots. And, but they're not nice people and they really are trying to imitate us to take our jobs, so we get rid of them really quick. <laughs> but we have fun doing each other's voices yeah, if we're not do. there and stuff. Because I always try to do, I, I, I try to do Obi-Wan, and I can't do Obi-Wan, but I can do a James doing a <laughs> There's an the voyage of the Yes. The scrubbing bubbles. I yes. <laughs> That's why we're both race safe for me. You just have to be a nice person That's right. to be yes. in the voiceover world, right? Pretty much. <laughs> well, you know, this is Behind the Force, and, and we're here to give you guys a behind the scenes look at the making of our show. And so we have a, a makeshift studio set up over here, and I thought we'd, we'd show you what it's like in the studio to record an episode. So, James, would you like to join us on oh, stage? Oh, I because, guess so. Yeah, because we record as a cast. So, yeah. So this anymore, so it's very cool. We have a, a thing very technical called an ISDN line. It's a phone patch, and essentially Tom can be anywhere in the world with that. They can be anywhere, and it sounds as though he's right there with us. It works. Very cool, but this is a treat for us, because yes. usually when we go into the studio, it's it's whoever is in that episode for the day, and we all stand next, next to each other. It's like an old-fashioned radio drama, and we, we literally perform the episode live in order. It's, it's yep. a lot of fun. So yes. we go in, we get the whole script. Usually we don't get it until we literally walk into the studio. So Which is different for, for Clone Wars. That's, that's the way it is. But for any other show, normally on a cartoon, you'll get the script now, uh, like a day before at least, and you can read through and stuff. But for Clone Wars, <laughs> they're so secretive, and it's, uh, there's so many little things there that you can't know about. They give us just our scripts right when we get there, and we have to read real fast. So as a voice actor, you have to be able to cold read. Well, that means be able to just pick something up and make it sound as though it's just flowing from you right there. Yeah, first time. If you want to be a voice actor, learn how to re cold read. Yes, yes. And, and so when we go in, we record our lines, and then they do the animation to our voices. So we don't ever get to see anything. We usually watch the episode when you guys do for the first time on Friday nights. But every now and then, we'll go in, and they'll have a scene done, already animated, that we've already recorded, but they've decided to change a line or two, or we need to you know, fix the emotion, because maybe we didn't get the emotion quite right. So we have to go in and re-record it, but we have to match the animation exactly. So we have to pay attention to our character's lips, and they call it the lip clap, and we have to match it. So that's what we're gonna do today. We have a Yoda and Ahsoka scene, and um, Obi-Wan's not in it, but. Uh, I have a bad <laughs> feeling about this. <laughs> oh, we, we have some fun things in a minute. But, so, so this is exciting, because yeah. we didn't actually record the scene together that we're about to watch in the studio the yeah. first time. So we'll get to do it together here for the first time. This for the, for, for, um, for, for, for the fourth the time. <laughs> yeah, we did it earlier today, but we'll try our best to get it right. But okay, let's let's watch it. Trouble you are, Kadwa. 
Yes, Master Yoda. I've been having dreams. Hmm. Dreams, you say? Yes, dreams. Uh, or visions. I don't know. But they're so real. Premonition. Telling you something. They are. I know I reported otherwise. But I believe that Aura Singh isn't dead. She's still alive. And she's preparing to kill someone close to me. So, you begin to see the true power of the Force. Visions they are. Underestimate them. You must not. Alright. <laughs> Is it strange for anybody to look at those, those characters and then look at these people and go, wow. It, even for me, who worked with them all the time, I go, it's just Ahsoka and Yoda talking. And then <laughs> it's them. So, I can't wait to see you guys do this. Lie. See the resemblance you do not? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, shall we try? Yeah. All right, let's roll it. Troubled you are, Padawan. Yes, Master Yoda. I've been having dreams. Hmm. Dreams, you say? Yes, dreams. Or visions. I don't know. They all seem so real. Premonitions. Tell me something they are. I know I reported otherwise, but I believe that Aura Singh isn't dead. And she's preparing to kill someone close to me. So, you begin to see the true power of the Force. Visions they are. Underestimate them. You must not. Yeah, in a studio, there's a big glass window where they're looking in at us. So basically, you, you would be like all the directors, and there's usually about this many people in the room, too. <laughs> <laughs> and we're all there, and they're just sitting there talking, and you can't hear what they're saying, and you know that they're talking about you, but yeah. you come to find out, they're usually just going, so what do you want to get for lunch? You know, like, <laughs> it seems as though they're, they, they talk very important for a while. Yeah. Yes, so we decide to goof around and have fun when they're saying the important things, and it's usually James... And Tom and Dee and Matt just cracking me up because they can do all sorts of different voices and they like to reread the scene as, let's say, Fred Flintstone or Sean Connery or all different characters. So I think we should redo the scene. Okay. I think, well, James, you should be Ahsoka. I can be Ahsoka all <laughs> A dream fulfilled. <laughs> and Tom, you're Yoda, but, but as different characters. Okay. Who do you think you I'll should be? I'll do Sean Connery. Good <laughs> suggestion. And I, you know, I do a character on another show called Johnny Test. Anybody know Johnny Test? <laughs> yeah, so how about if I do Ahsoka as Johnny Test, yeah? <laughs> yeah. That sounds okay. good to me. Okay. All right, let's try it again. Trouble to our Padawan. Totally, Master Yoda. I've been having <laughs> these really cool weird dreams. Mm. Dreams, you say? Well, dreams, visions, you know, things like uh, Dookie and I do things like he could be dead, really cool things like that. You know, it's weird. Premonitions. Telling you something they are. Yeah, blah, 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 whatever you know. Okay, no, 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 no. I'm thinking that maybe your thing isn't uh, really dead and she's going to come and get me and it's really kind of weird. And, you know. So, you begin to see the true power of Scotch. This is a underestimate the man of
Did you see that episode? Did you guys see that episode? I saw that on the net. Oh, okay. Oh, in every episode. Oh my gosh. Oh, we never missed one. Oh, we have a true fan here. So, okay. So we'll do the girls first, ladies first. And we're going to have you audition for Ahsoka, and I'll give you a sample since it's really just my voice. <laughs> it's, it's easy to show up to work and do Ahsoka. You just have to talk. Um, but with, this is when Ahsoka sees Chewbacca for the first time. And all of a sudden, she sees him walk out from behind the ship. He's over seven feet tall, and she says, It's a Wookiee. Can you do that? I need you to be really surprised, really shocked, and say, it's a Wookiee. All right. Now, what's your name? Jessica. Jessica. Okay, and Jessica's going to give us her best Ahsoka. Say, it's a Wookiee. It's a Wookiee. <laughs> okay, it's a little shock and awe on that one. Great job, Jessica. All right, what's your name? Missy. Missy. Okay, give us your best. It's a Wookiee. It's a Wookiee. All right, all right. Round of applause. Okay, over here, what's your name? It's a Wookiee. Really good. Okay. We've got three wonderful girls here. Now, now Tom. I'm going to try. First, let, so to be fair, let's play a chunk of uh, Chewbacca so you can try to match this sort of thing. Yeah, listen to this audio clip. <laughs>
actually comes in right in the beginning of the scene. So you have to be ready to go as soon as it comes on, all right? Yeah, Can't we tap her on the shoulder when she's supposed to start and all this yeah. Yeah, story. Yeah, you just got to help. You ready? ready? All right, one more round of applause and encouragement. Good job. 